Welcome back to AP Chemistry. My name is Jeremy Krug, and in this video, we're going to be looking at one of the most fundamental parts of AP Chemistry, and that is the concept of the mole and stoichiometry. In fact, it's one of the most fundamental parts in all of chemistry. Let's get started. Now, when we talk about what is a mole, well, that is basically the SI unit of substance. Now, a mole is essentially defined as 602 followed by 21 zeros, approximately, of objects. Now, this is rounded off to three significant figures. Uh, in the uh, American way of, of reading the numbers, we'd say 602 sextillion. In other places, they would read that differently. Um, as a result, let's just use scientific notation so we can all speak the same language here and say that it's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd items. That's how many things there are in a mole. So for example, if we were to have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, or one mole of grains of rice, that would be enough to fill the whole uh, world, all the land area in the world, to a depth of about 250 feet, or about, oh, 70 uh, meters or so. If you had 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd hockey pucks, that would have about the same mass as the moon. So we're talking about a huge number of things. Now you might be wondering, why do we use such a huge number? Uh, it almost seems like it's unreasonable to use such a large number. Well, that's because if we have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of water, well, that's about 6 tenths of an ounce, or about 18 milliliters of water, a very small amount, not even enough to quench your thirst. And so hopefully this uh, helps us to, to appreciate how large of a number Avogadro's number, as this number is called, is one mole of things, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. It's an um, unimaginably huge number. At the same time, this may help us to appreciate how incredibly tiny atoms and molecules are. If, if we need that big of a number to talk about such a a small amount of, of water, for example. Now, when we talk about one mole of carbon, one mole of carbon means 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd carbon atoms. Now, like I said just a minute ago, when we say uh, a mole or 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, we also use this other term, Avogadro's number or Avogadro's constant, as it's sometimes called. And this is named after Amadeo Avogadro, who did some of the preliminary work that helped us describe or uh, calculate this number in later years. One mole of water, that would be referring to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd water molecules, because water's most fundamental unit is the molecule. Uh, one mole of sodium chloride, well, that means 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd sodium chloride formula units because the most fundamental unit of sodium chloride is a formula unit being ionic. One mole of bromine, you know, it's Br2, that means 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of bromine. So the point here is that anything you have, one mole of it just means 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd fundamental units of that. So sodium ions, you know, that many sodium ions. One mole of anything is basically just 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd fundamental units of that substance. So it depends on if it's an, um, an element, a monatomic element, it would just be, you know, those, that number of atoms. And it's a covalent compound, it's that many water, uh, that many molecules and so forth. Now, let's use this to uh, do some conversion. So we're going to ask this question. How many molecules of carbon dioxide would be found in 0 0.380 moles of that substance? Well, once again, we're going to use the fact that 6.02 times 10 to the, to the 23rd molecules of something would be equal to one mole of that substance. So we're going to start with 0 0.380 moles of carbon dioxide. And of course, we're converting to molecules of CO2. So that's going to be way down here at the end. Now, once again, in our conversion factor, we're going to put moles on the bottom, since uh, that's what we're trying to convert from. You know, whatever unit we, we start with up here is going to 
end up down here, as we learn in dimensional analysis. And if we put molecules on top, because we're converting the molecules, well, we just learned a few minutes ago that one mole is the same as Avogadro's number of molecules. So moles can cancel top and bottom. And essentially, this looks like a multiplication problem. So in your calculator, you'll key in 0 0.380 times 6.02 E23. And you should get an answer of something very close to about 2.29 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of carbon dioxide. So it's just a simple uh, conversion here. Now we can go the, the other way. If we have a sample of 1.02 times 10 to the 24th ions of calcium, 2 plus, that is equivalent to how many moles? Once again, it's just a simple conversion. We're going to start with what's given to us, the 1.02 times 10 to the 24th ions of calcium. And we're converting to moles. So at the end, we're trying to convert to moles of calcium. So in our conversion factor, we're going to put ions on the bottom. And we're converting to moles. So moles goes on top. And how many ions are in one mole? Well, hopefully we know it's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So ions will cancel top and bottom. And this problem looks essentially like a division. So in your calculator, you're going to key in 1.02 E24 divide by 6.02 E23. And your answer should be something close to 1.69 moles of calcium. So hopefully you can see how, how this works. Now, this is nice and all, but the fact is none of us have a scale or a balance that reads in moles. And most of us aren't really very interested in counting out molecules or atoms or ions. That would take too long. So it might be more practical to think about what is the mass of one mole? Because we have scales and balances that will read in grams. So how many grams are there in a mole? Well, it depends. Every element is going to be different. If we look at this element, for example, copper, we see that its atomic mass is 63.546 AMU. Well, as it turns out, one mole of copper has a mass of, guess what? That atomic mass expressed in grams. So it's 63.546 grams. And that's pretty neat because that means that you can take a scale and weigh out 63.546 grams of copper and point to that and say that is Avogadro's number of atoms of copper. Right? That's one mole of copper atoms. So once again, for any element, one mole is equivalent to its atomic mass expressed in grams. And so that's why uh, earlier in this course, in an earlier video, we looked at uh, molecular mass and formula mass and atomic mass. Well, all of those, we often just call it the molar mass. For a compound, we're going to uh, uh, just calculate its molar mass or, or, or molecular mass and write it out in grams. So NaCl, as an example, we can look at those individual periodic table squares. Na, sodium, is about 22.99 grams. Chlorine is about oh, 35.45. So we just have to add those together. And we find out that it's 58.44 grams in one mole of sodium chloride. And like I said, we call that the molar mass. And so often, you'll hear us talk about the formula mass or the molecular mass. But to be honest, it's just as easy to refer to this as molar mass, because that's a word that refers to anything. The mole, one mole of anything is basically its molar mass in grams. So that's a, a nice vocabulary word that we use. Let's try another example using this concept here. A 33.9 gram sample of aluminum oxide would contain how many formula units of that compound? Well, once again, we're starting with 33.9 grams of aluminum oxide, and we're trying to find formula units. Now, whenever we have multiple steps, the rule is always convert to moles first. Or as I sometimes said in first year chemistry, all roads lead to moles. Okay, If you have different steps, different ways you're going, always convert to moles first. So we're going to set this up. We have 33.9 grams of aluminum oxide given to us from the problem. And the question is, 
how many formula units. So way down here at the end, we're converting to formula units. So first step, convert to moles. In AP Chemistry, that's one of the most important things we can do. It should be almost automatic, being able to convert to moles. So that means in our first conversion factor, we're going to put grams on the bottom, and we're going to put moles on top. One mole goes on top. Now, how many grams are in a mole of aluminum oxide? We have to add those together on the periodic table. Aluminum is about 27.0, and we have two of them. And oxygen is about 16.0, and we have three of those. So that's about 102.0 when you add them up. So grams cancel, top and bottom. We're now in moles of aluminum oxide. But we want to be in formula units of aluminum oxide. So let's do our second step. Let's convert to formula units in our next conversion factor. So one mole is going to go on the bottom, and the formula units on the top. And of course, there are 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd formula units in one mole. So we're going to cancel moles, top and bottom. And now we just have some arithmetic to do. On your calculator, you can key in 33.9 divided by 102.0 times 6.02 E23. As a reminder, if there's a number in the denominator, we divide by that number. If there's a number in the numerator, we multiply by that number. Your answer should be somewhere around 2.00 times 10 to the 23rd formula units of aluminum oxide. So a very typical problem that we might have if we're trying to do a simple mole conversion here with two steps. Now, here's another question that sometimes we may ask. In grams, what is the mass of one molecule of water? Well, once again, we are given one molecule, so that's a number of molecules, you know, one, and then we're asked to convert it to grams. So this looks like a multi-step problem. What's the first step we should always do? Convert to, to moles, right? All roads lead to moles, so convert to moles first. So we're going to start with one molecule of H2O, and way down here at the end, we're trying to convert to grams of water. And the first step, of course, is convert to moles. So in our first conversion factor, I'm going to put molecules on the bottom and one mole on top. And we know that there are 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules in one mole. So I can cancel molecules top and bottom. I'm in moles of water, but I want to be in grams of water. So I can set up my next conversion factor. I'm going to put one mole on the bottom of the next conversion factor, so it'll cancel with this uh, unit over here, and we're converting to grams, so that goes on top. And how many grams are in a mole of H2O? Well, we can look that up on the periodic table pretty easily. H is about 1.0, and we have two of them, and oxygen is about 16.0, so that's about 18.0 grams in a mole of water. So we can cancel moles and do the arithmetic. Basically, it's one divided by 6.02 E23 times 18.0. So the answer that we get is that one molecule of water has a mass of about 2.99 times 10 to the negative 23rd grams. So that makes sense. It's one molecule. It should have a very, very tiny mass. So that makes sense. Let's try one more problem here together. How many atoms of hydrogen are contained within 1.00 grams of water? Well, this is an interesting question. Now, once again, we know we're starting with 1.00 grams of water, and we're interested in finding how many atoms of hydrogen. So way down here at the end, we're going to have atoms of hydrogen. Now, what's the very first step we should do? Convert to moles, right? If we're not in moles, a good uh, bet is to convert to moles first. So in the first conversion factor, we're going to put grams on the bottom, and we're converting to moles. So one mole goes on top, and grams in a mole of water is, well, it's the same as it was a few minutes ago, 18.0. So we can cancel that out. Now, we want to find out, you know, we're in moles of water. We want to be in atoms of hydrogen. So let's do a ratio here, something that we're going to call a mole ratio. Okay, we're going to put water 
on the bottom of our conversion factor, we're going to convert to moles of the other substance. So I'm going to put water on the bottom. I'm going to put hydrogen in the numerator. Now, let's think of this. How many hydrogens are there in every water molecule? Well, we know that the, super, or the subscript here says that it's 2, H2O. So that means that there are two hydrogen atoms in every one molecule of water. So I can put one water molecule has two hydrogen atoms. That's a 2 to 1 ratio. Now that's the next step if you're converting to some other substance. Okay? We didn't have that in the previous problems because we were starting with water and the question was asking about water. But in this problem, we're starting with water and we're being asked about specifically the hydrogen. So that's a little bit different. So that's why we have the mole ratio in here. So 2 to 1. I can cancel out the water now. And I'm in moles of hydrogen. Well, I want to be in atoms of hydrogen. So this is where I'm going to carry out one last step so I can convert from moles to atoms. And so in my last conversion factor, I'm going to put one mole on the bottom so it will cancel. And we're going to put atoms on the top. And hopefully we remember that there are 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms in one mole of something. So we're going to cancel moles, top and bottom. And now we can do the arithmetic on here. So it's 1.00 divided by 18.0 times 2 times 6.02 E23. And when you key this into your calculator, you can try that. Hopefully your answer is something very close to 6.69 times 10 to the 22nd. This is a pretty interesting set of calculations. We can actually uh, weigh out or find the mass you know, of one gram of water and then point to that and say that has 6.69 times 10 to the 22nd atoms of hydrogen. That's a pretty neat calculation when you think about it. Now let's review here because this last problem was the most complex of all of these that we've done so far in this video. Now notice that there were three fundamental steps. I want you to pay close attention to these three fundamental steps because we're going to use them in the next video to solve uh, problems similar to this with reactions. Now the first step we had was to convert to moles. Okay, So that's the first step in pretty much all of these. If it's not in moles, convert to moles. The second step was to carry out this mole ratio. So that was where we had, uh, instead of grams and uh, moles and atoms or molecules in the conversion factor, we have the actual substance in there. We're actually putting, in this case, water and hydrogen in there. And we use the, uh, some, uh, the subscripts, in this case, as the mole ratio. So that was the two to one business that we had in our second step. Now, the last step was to convert to our final unit. So, you know, usually we're not being asked to find something just in moles. We're being asked how many atoms or how many grams or how many molecules. And that was the third step that we did to convert it to atoms of hydrogen in that particular problem. So at this point, we're going to pause and stop. And hopefully you should be able to answer pretty much any type of simple uh, mole conversion problem. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you, at, at the very least you learned some chemistry. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't done so, subscribe to my channel al already. I'm Jeremy Krug and this is my complete AP Chemistry course online. So I uh, hope you've enjoyed this and I hope to see you next time where, where we can learn some more chemistry together.